You've got to give a ball occasionally, you know, Graham. There's two people out marked in the back of the box. Screw cool, it, didn't I? I'll grant you that. Good morning. Well, then another time, no one's going to bother to run for you. Not if you never give a ball. So I just have to go get me on, wouldn't I? About ten minutes. Ten minutes? You want to get into the game a bit? And take your hands out of your pockets, Rex, please. How many shirts have you got on, boy? Don't know, sir. You don't know? He's got so many, sir, he can't count. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count anyway. That'll do, Bruce, thank you. One shirt, Deakin, that's the rule. Good heavens, it's not even cold. I'm cold, sir. Then you ought to run about. My granddad gives a ball, sir. <laughs> Never mind about that. But Mr. Bradley said so. You stop playing, sir. We'll stop playing when I say. Anyway. I thought Mr. Bradley was. One shirt, Deakin, that's the rule, and I heard that, Graham. What do you think rules are for? Don't know, sir. Well, get them off, lad! However many there are of them. Just score, sir. Three, two. Four, two, sir. Surely can't the last one. Perhaps you'd better play like that for a bit. See if it encourages you to run about a bit more. His tits will fall off, I <laughs> That's funny, is it? Shall we go on with the game now? Ready when you are, sir. And I want no more talking until the whistle goes. <whistles> Suppose we can talk now, I, sir. Don't be silly, lad. Talking until the whistle. That's it, right, just blow the whistle. I said off. You wanted to know how much longer? Well, as far as you're concerned, no longer at all. Now, off when I say. Oh, Go on, please, early sir. shower for you today, Deacon. Oh, how much longer, sir? Oh, Fred, not you now. What's your hurry? Got a lot of things to do this afternoon, have you? Rather a lot, sir. Oh, oh, yes. well, 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 all three here. Come on, colours. Let's get the equaliser, then we can go into tea. Oh, not before that, sir. Last minute equaliser. Come on, lad. Staff room locker, will you please? I can't hear. Hey, Daddy, please Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Jim. Not a bad game. If only some of them would try. And if only some of them wouldn't. How can a boy put three shirts on on an afternoon like this? Incredible. You heard about Rex finally owning up last night, I suppose. Pissing in the linen cupboard. Urinating is the head's preferred term. How could he ever expect to get away with it? That's what beats me. Perhaps he didn't want to get away with it. Oh, I know what you think, Dan. Father in prison. It might have something to do with it. He's not the only one with that particular problem, unfortunately. I suppose one day he'll end up there himself. I should think so. With the right assistance from the right people. Meaning? Oh. I sometimes think the head can't have a particularly rich imaginative life. Well, I'd better go and see who's getting drowned in the communal showers. <laughs> Hello, Jenny. Oh, Daddy, Mummy, did you have forgotten? Oh, no, no, I haven't forgotten. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Mr. Bradley. I'll come and relieve you. Since I've changed. Thank you, sir. 
You know you did, and you found to own two face. Obviously he didn't. Now what's all this? Going on in here. <laughs> How do you go, Martin Bruce? Even if you didn't get out much of a sweat. Here you go, Rex, lad. Come on. You don't look as if you've had a wash in weeks. I've got a break mum, sir, and a break bum there, and have to show us. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay? Fine. You? Fine. Did you go into town? Couldn't in the end. They'd mess the buses about. They don't do that one from the cross anymore. You should use the bag. I'll take you in in the morning. Kids okay? They're okay. Something happened. We're going to have a visitor. Visitors. No. Oh. Well, come on, who? Anyone else? What a mess you're making. You at least try and keep the paint on the newspaper. What do you know? How did he know where to find us? Oh, God, people like that, they can find anything. Do you want to see them? Ten years. I don't. Why? Are you afraid of him? Because you don't have to be that, whatever else you may be. Anyway, they're coming. Doesn't exactly give us much option, does he? Sounds like a royal progress. We shall be in your area. A royal progress or a free offer. Have your packet tops ready when the happiness man calls. We'll tell him to go away. It's perfectly simple. We'll just tell him to go away. What can they do to us? We'll just say no thanks. And that'll be it. Just like we did to the world. I love you. I love you. I shall have to get more food in. They say lunchtime. Perhaps they'll bring a hamper. I wouldn't bother. I do have some pride. I love you. Where's the lad? Playing. He went to play at uh, Damien's house after school. Oh, he can't be far. I think I'll just stop and shout. You frighten the birds. Story of my life. Ah! I'm lo really looking forward to seeing Dan, you know that? Do you? It's 
Let's hope he's looking forward to seeing you. I like Dan. You never knew him, really, did you? And Joyce? And Joyce, obviously. Have a look at the uh, map and the Watson, will you? See if you can find this Lockhart Hall place. I don't suppose it'll be marked. Not unless it's in southern Spain. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there must be another one somewhere. I bought a whole raft of the bloody things the other day. Have a look on the floor. Nothing but thick wool carpet, as far as the eye can envy. I have to ask. God, Barbie, one has to try. Don't you agree with people? No one could accuse you of not trying, my darling. Only connect, after all. I should rather like to connect with you in that hat, as a matter of fact. The sooner the better. Me in the hat, or you in the hat? Just like you are, hat and coat of the lot. What's keeping you? Well, I don't want to frighten the birds. <laughs> what do you think? Of? Are you satisfied? Is this really the way you want it? Because in the end, you know, you're the one who has to decide. No one else can decide for you. Well? Well, I was a bit pushed, sir. Pushed? In what way pushed? The time, sir. In other words, you left it till the last minute, right? Not the last minute. The hell of it is, this could be a really good piece of work. The ideas are all there. But you haven't worked them out, have you? Sir. And how do you spell business? B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S. -S. And is that how you spelled it? No, oh, sir. Twit. Aren't you? Sir. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know, sir. Do it again, I suppose. Do it again. And right this time. That sounds like someone. Peter. Peter. Is that a car coming? Because go and give them a wave if it is. I don't know them. Just so they know they're here. For goodness sake, try and get the simple things right, Gran. That's what matters. Will you? Try. You try. We want that O-level. Sir. There you are, then. Take it through. I didn't mean to. No one means to do anything. Peter? Looking for us, sorry. Mill Cottage. She's just down there. You're not, uh, sorry. One of the family. Me? No, no, no. Sorry. It's just, it's just down there. You know, you're almost there. He is. Mr. Bradley, is it you want? Yeah, that's right. Well, thanks. Uh, Hello. Hello. I got a feeling we've come to see you. Am I right? I think so. I think so, too. Aren't you, Bob? Hop in. What kind of car is this? Yes. It's an Alfa Romeo, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, what kind of car do you have? We don't. We have feet. <laughs> Sounds like Dan's kid, all right? You don't want to have the thing, do you? I never want to see you again, as long as I live. OK, we'll get married. You don't want to get married. What the hell's that got to do with it? Out of the blue. Oh, a better place to be out of, eh? <laughs> Was it a frightful nerve on our part? Oh, I yeah. like nerve. Joyce? Hey, catch hold. Now pull me, right? <laughs> Not too hard. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I think this is bliss. Joyce! <laughs> what a long time. Yes, isn't it? But nobody. But nobody would think so. She doesn't look a day over. You don't look a day over. Oh, Honestly. Is that what you've oh. done? Oh, you haven't bloody well gone and cooked, have you? For us? Not gone and cooked, stayed and cooked. 
The natives often have a meal at lunchtime. Often have a meal at lunchtime. Didn't you get my wire? We'd look a bit more surprised than this if we hadn't. Yes. <laughs> well, I tried to call you, but... Um... We're not on the phone. Ah, well, no wonder there was no reply. <laughs> Only we were going to take you out to lunch, yes. and that was the whole idea. Well, you can't. Well, that was the whole idea. It's all ready. Oh, Christ. You must think we're the absolute prize sponges of all time. Joyce, you shouldn't have. I know, but I did. Oh, you look marvellous. Marvellous? Ten years, eh? A lifetime, and you look marvellous. Oh, um, this is Hannah. Oh. And this is Carol. Oh, hello, this is Hannah, this is Carol. This is Alan. This is Barbara. Hello. I expect you know your father. <laughs> Come on, guys, you can turn your room. I'll give you a... What a terrific cottage. Yes, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's the prettiest one we've seen, easily. Aren't you organised? Oh, someone has to be. Do you mind? On the contrary. You look exactly the same. You don't. You look better than ever. <laughs> Ten years and three children later don't make me laugh. Oh, I never make people laugh. Ask anyone. They'll laugh. Honestly, the country. Just the air's worth the journey. Isn't it just? I don't blame you in the least for what you decided to do. Thank you. I don't blame myself. <laughs> well, that makes two of us, doesn't it? You seem very happy. Are you? Very. And you? Very. Well, there we are then. No regrets? None. <laughs> 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 Hey, oh, it's tremendous to see you. Both of you. All of you. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't believe how often we've talked about you. How often everybody's talked about you. <laughs> I feel really bad about this lunch business, though. I, I, you know, I thought you'd realise. Don't worry, you're only getting what we're having anyway. Oh, OK. You've broken my last stubborn resistance. What are we having anyway? We don't lead the grand life, I'm afraid. Oh, that's absolutely grand as far as we're concerned. London's impossible. Yeah. Yes, there's only one place worse than London. New York. What about New Delhi? <laughs> you spend a lot of time in New York? Oh, as little as possible. I've, um, I've been having to go a lot lately in the way of trade, but uh, if it's anything to do with me, it's quickly in and quickly out, if you know what I mean. Thank God. He's doing amazingly well, I gather. Oh, he's not all that amazed. You know, people like Alan, if there's a ladder, they have to start climbing. I don't pretend you're not glad. And personally, I'd give it all up tomorrow if I had to. Luckily, you won't have to. Well, you never know in this business. Hey, <laughs> Dan's the man I admire. You know, you did the right thing for the right reason at the right moment. Turned your back on the whole sordid, ambitious gangbang. Yeah, you're the sort of bastard who gives the rest of us a bad conscience. Well, who'll have sherry and who'll have whiskey, Barbara? And sherry for me, please. What about Alan? Oh, whiskey. No more. What are you actually doing these days, Alan, on the television? Because we hardly ever see it. We don't have it. I thought there was something missing in this idyllic setup. Oh, well, that's what makes it so idyllic, of course. No box. Do you really not have a box? Can't afford it. And we don't like it. Well, we all have to swallow a peck of dirt in our lives. Or in my case, once a week. He loves it. Well, the dirt? Can't get enough no, of it. Every time he sees himself on the box. <laughs> it's frying tonight. The mercury shoots straight up to the top. It's perfectly true. Oh, you actually appear. <laughs> actually appear? You're still wearing woad, you bloody smart measures. Well, I'm only the scourge of the nation. Yeah. Hammer of the Scots, chisel of the English, and the block and tackle of two continents. Or oh, soon will be when my American programme gets off the ground and into the ratings. Have you really never seen him doing his stuff? We did once. Did we have some others? That's right. With some trades unionist, wasn't it? You tore him to pieces. Oh, Christ. Uh, poor old Herbert Scrag. Well, what else could you do with him? Scrag and a Scrag. My parents thought you were the voice of righteousness itself. <laughs> and they were absolutely right. Oh, actually, I'm, uh, I'm getting a bit brassed off for the front man, but I'm thinking of hanging up my sincerity at the end of next season. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> what I call his think about it till I tell you to think about something else face. Mm-hmm. 
think we could eat, actually. How dare you live in a bloody paradise? I mean, what if everyone decided to lead a, a simple, decent life without giving an envious thought to wall-to-wall -to -wall carpeting in the second car? We haven't got a first car. Is this all we're having? No, something else is coming later. Do you never see television, then, at all? Sometimes. Do you have it at school? At school? Mrs. Heddington would die, wouldn't she, Peter? Then let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> do you, um, do you like games? You know, soccer, cricket? A bit. A bit? Come on, Peter. He's in the football team. <laughs> Sometimes. That's terrific. Do you, uh, do you ever get to watch anybody? Sorry. Do you support anyone? Oh, Arsenal, Chelsea? Ipswich, of course. Ipswich? What's Ipswich? If you don't know who Ipswich is, you don't know who anyone is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was delicious. Hey, you know why we came down this way, do you? Did, um, Bar tell you? No, it hasn't come out yet. We assumed it was a royal progress. Oh, I should bloody well think so. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> Are you thinking of going back to acting at all? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know she'd ever been aware. Mm, to you. I was hoping to, but... Uh, the children, I suppose, was... Last one's a bit of a problem. Boy. Oh. Kept Bar pretty busy one way and another. Both. A spastic. Donald. Poor little bugger. I didn't know. Is it bad? Oh, in spades, hearts, diamonds and clubs, poor little sir. He can't do anything for himself, except all the things you don't want him to do. Is there any, uh, you know, hope? None. So, there we are. Or, more properly, there he is. I am sorry, I didn't... Oh, just don't let it cast a blight on the day. Maybe news to you, but it's not news to us. So. What have you done with him? Oh, I've got a wonderful girl, luckily. Oh, that's lucky. <laughs> Wait, you let her do anything? Your yeah, bar's so ridiculously devoted to that kid, I can't tell you. <coughs> Red cabbage. God, the one thing I like. Joyce, you must be psychic. No, she isn't. It also happens to be the one thing I like. Ah, ah brother. You still haven't told us why you came down this way? No, that's right. Well, I haven't a way. I, um... I wanted to get bar to myself for a couple of days and nights. No, we're looking for somewhere we could get away to, you know, with the kids and without. Sometimes, I hope. And I mean that very sincerely. Uh, a country air, no telephone, no television. How much do you want for this place? They can't have this house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fret yourself, Anna. I'm not about to chuck you out of your house, just your mummy and daddy. Perhaps we could do a what swap. Do yes. Done. Well, I expect the uh, the deal might be annulled on the grounds of your insanity, but otherwise. Mummy, can we go? When you finished. Could we put our hood before? Off you go then. Bye. Bye. But you're you're staying with the admin, are you? Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. Though I shouldn't even be mentioning the subject during a blowout like this, but tonight we're bloody we're going to take you out today. He says bloody all the time, doesn't he? He's allowed to. He's famous. Famous people can say what they like. <laughs> you know who's opened a place near here, do you? Dennis Pawson. You remember Dennis at Cambridge? Didn't he go to prison or something awful? Mm. Yeah, he did for a time. But now he's, um, he's become quite a force in the fancy nosh business. The man who put the scoff in a scoffier kind of thing. These days, you know, people have got more money than they know how to eat. Some people. Anyway, he's gone and acquired this place at, um... Oh, I'm Stow in the Hold, or whatever it's called, just down the road from here. I've got a map in the car. In that case, we'll never find it. And to you, madam. We're staying there the night. Sounds dreadfully smart. Oh, it's uh, just a simple country pub, served slightly underdone with a tossed green salad and just a tincture of, uh, whoop steer. <laughs> he's called it bumpkins. With the emphasis on the bump. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just our thing. Yeah, and he did said he'd be there this weekend, um... Uh, running a cultivated finger along the picture rail. And when I said we were hoping to see you, he said we should all come. You know, old mate's time. So it seems. Mmm. <laughs> God, this is nice, though. Seriously. Being here, seeing you. Here we really are, Bar, after all this time, eh? Yes, aren't you? Both of you.
Ah, it's all perfectly simple, really. If I hadn't been a vulgar, crude Australian peasant, I'd probably still be playing buttons at the Oldham Rep. No, it's true. I didn't hear anyone deny it. You're asking for a knuckle sandwich, Deirdre. Mm. Point being, they'll take from me what they won't take from one of themselves. They being who, exactly? The GBP. The great British public. Bless their masochistic hearts. Yes. I mean, because I'm a bloody uneducated cheap shagger, as far as they're concerned, I can do what I like. Wipe my feet on the Queen, use the Union Jack for a snot rag. And I'm not a traitor, I'm a hero. <laughs> We live, my friends, in the age of the shameless bastard. Now, the one thing the GBP won't stand for, and that's the still small voice of reason, moderation, and common decency. I still believe in those things. I should bloody well hope so, Daniel. I still believe in them, too. But you try peddling them to Mr. and Mrs. Gore Blimey. They don't want to know. And what they want to hear is that anyone who stands for anything, which takes a little time or a little effort, is nothing but a sodding great hypocrite who actually spends most of his time with one hand up a chorus girl skirt and the other one in the till. And the lesson for today is always wipe your filthy hands clean on the next man's laundry and leave him to do the explaining. These be thy gods, O Israel. I'm not quite clear whether you're talking about yourself doing all this or other people doing it. Look, sometimes you really think you've got the world by the balls and then the world turns around and says, that was wonderful, darling. Can I have the same again next week? You'll find my purse and my handbag. Dan, if there's one thing I hate, it's people who are incorruptible. I don't smoke. And don't smoke. Joyce, do you? <laughs> Not cigars, thanks. Look, I must just go and phone and... Oh, sweetheart. For one night. Excuse me. You know what I wish? I wish they'd uh, put a pillow over his face by mistake on purpose. Well, they must have known. You can't do things like that. Look, I don't care for myself. I mean, all I've got to do is shell up, which are the least of my present worries, Frank. I'm even quite fond of the poor little bastard. Nice Barbara. I mean, she's not really here even now. What sort of life's he going to have in the end? Rather, she was shagging somebody on the quiet. Well, it'd be a lot more healthy for her and me, probably. I tell you, you're lucky. Hey, I'll tell you something funny, shall I? I called him Donald, as in Bradman. <laughs> you wouldn't think it of me, would you? Well, I did. I. Now, I suppose people will think it's Donald as in duck. Quack, quack, quack. Can't exactly see him opening the batting for anyone. Did Bradman? Oh. Details, details. But she, she won't give up with him, you see. That's what gets me. She, uh, she was going to go back to acting, but she won't. She, she just sticks at home all day. I could get her some interviewing and stuff to do. You know, no trouble at all, but she won't hear of it. I think that's very honourable. Well, of course it's honourable. It was also bloody maddening and the next best thing to downright disloyal. Not allowing me to exert improper influence on her behalf. I think we should be going. Yes, so, I think we should be going. I wonder if Dennis got a box on the premises. I'm on it a bit. Thanks. Well, everything all right? Dennis, I absolutely loathe having to say this to an old friend and you know I wouldn't if I could possibly avoid it, but it was absolutely bloody marvellous. <laughs> You remember Dan, do you? King of the Cambridge Com? Yes, the best Mercutio I ever saw. Romeo! Oh, Romeo. <laughs> and a plague on both your houses. You remember Joyce, my wife? Hello. Yes, ever your servant, ma'am. I hear you've acquired a cottage down this way. No, we just live here. Oh, super! New Wells has got a bijou resi down the road, and that's Ted Paris. No. Yeah. Ted Paris? Oh. Ted Paris MP, if you don't mind. Remember? I'm a little starlet from J. Athel Rank. Brixton born and a voice like a yank. I'm all set to make it. I'm all set to shake it. I'm a starlet from J. Arthur Rank. Yeah, go on. Next verse, I'm a little starlet from J. Arthur Rank. And my eyes are as big as a bank. 
for success I've lost California and, and Boston. <laughs> I'm a starlet, I, I said, said a starlet, starlet. I'm, I'm a starlet, starlet from J. Arthur, Arthor Arthor Rank. Hey, you. <laughs> what do you do for an encore? Well, I usually imitate the mass bands of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, but unfortunately, I licked my kettle drum in rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything all right? Or rather, yeah. was everything all right yeah. until then? Three stars and Michelin Guide. Nando, more coffee for Mr. and Mrs. Pick. Hey, Dennis. You haven't got a box on the premises by any chance, have you? A box? Goggle, masses for the use of. Have you, by any chance? <laughs> Only I noticed there wasn't one in our room. You think the boys have got one upstairs somewhere? Oh, would it be a bloody nerve? At least you would rather. In that case, can we? And then we'll drive you home. Well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Don all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He asked where we were, apparently. Maria told him he hasn't murmured since. Asked? He must have come on a bit in eight hours. And the others? Well, the others will be all right. I told you he can make himself understood now. I'm going to call in a little while and make sure he's asleep. He's not going to be sitting up reading Proust exactly, is he? <laughs> Darling, you, uh, you do exactly what you want, of course. I, I was just hoping you'd relax. You know, enjoy yourself. OK, I'll leave it a minute or two. Okay. Yes. Isn't that Alan Parks? Yes, that's right. What did I tell you? <laughs> it's ridiculous, really, isn't it? The way one feels, one knows him so well. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Well, we mustn't keep you. He really is famous. Yes, isn't he? Now then, I'd like to get this quite straight before we go any further. I take it you don't deny that these weapons are being made? I think we should stick to the point. I understood you'd come here to talk about defence, is that not right? Yes. Oh, no, I want to be quite clear. Is that yes, yes, or yes, no? <laughs> I was told this was to be a reasonable discussion. Oh, if I'd been unreasonable. I'm asking you whether these weapons are being made in government establishments or not. You are, I understand, uh, Parliamentary Undersecretary for Defence, and therefore I take it you are at least technically in some degree responsible for these things? Bastard, aren't you? Minister, well, you know I always hate myself in the morning. Any weapon whatever should be able to be manufactured without any public check or inquiry if the government in its wisdom or whatever mm. other means it may employ thinks it should. Oh, poor if it's old Ronnie, I was bloody unfair, really. Oh, is that what the government is for? You see, we have these <clears throat> cases of dead cattle, blind, hemorrhaging, and showing obvious signs of extreme physical suffering. And the trail, if I may put it that way, leads to your back door. Compensation has been fully paid. The electorate was not directly consulted on the development of the Spitfire, and if it had been, let's be honest about it, this country would probably not have had the plane when the time came. And what oh, time that's is lovely, it lovely. When we shall need to oh, that's super, super. Well, tell him I'll see him at supper time tomorrow. Yes. Oh, are they? Oh, well, give them my love, too. All right, Marie, all right. See you tomorrow. Bye. All right? Fine. These kids. Can't ever get them out of your mind, can you? It's the same with some of mine. It may have been being tested so that we could find an antidote. Have you had enough? It's Sometimes getting a bit boring this now. this kind of research can help to create a medical breakthrough. <laughs> That's rather like defending the use of the rack on the grounds that it might help find a cure for rheumatism, isn't it? Oh, no, Your don't. job is to amuse the public. Mine is to protect them. In a world where I'm sorry to say they face bigger enemies than their own elected representatives, mm -hmm. And bigger dangers than getting less than a hundred laughs to the gallon. Yes, we don't amuse, we inform. But Ronald Braithwaite, thank you very much. That's, That's all we have, have time for tonight. And so until the same, the same time, time next week. week. Thank, thank you for being with us. And good, good night. night. Hold look, a keen witted, warm hearted, fast talking, thick skinned Aussie news hawk. Until the old floor manager gives us the wind up, and then you can all piss off home. Thank you very much. Very impressive. Oh, Christ, Dad. And now I think we ought to be making traction. Well, I'll make them for you while sport. No trouble to burst your back. <clears throat> Look, 
If you don't mind, I'll stay put now I'm here. Of course, we wouldn't dream of... How was everything? Oh, everything was fine. He was asleep. Well, shall we? I'm sorry. Are you all right? I'm all right. What was going on exactly? Nothing. They didn't come in, did they? Did they? Boys, right? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I wish we caught that young. It? Nothing, luckily. They didn't, did they, Jenny? And they say our boys are delinquent. Delinquent. Some of these village boys are oh, twice as horrible. bad. Horrible. Oh, what? I'm what? all right. I'm all right. Honest. Do anything. Look, I'll take you home. They didn't do anything. I seem to be just riding round around the cottage. Yes. God, I'm sorry about this. You needn't honestly bother. Look, I'm coming. You might be dealt with a bunch of them and. Please don't tell Dad, Mr. Bradley. It really wasn't anything. I had no idea the natives were so restless in this part of the country. God almighty, look at this. Visiting cards? I hate this village sometimes. I hate it. Well, one thing you can say for them, they were better organized than we managed to be. God, I was a selfish son too, wasn't I? Just think, if. I don't think I will. He's a hell of a nice kid, Peter. Yes. I hope I didn't ruin your life. Ruin my life? Ah, he's a terrific character, Dan, my God. Yes. What about schools around here, Joyce? Schools? For Peter. Now, where does he go? Well, he's at the local primary. It's not too bad. But later? Shall I make some tea or something? Oh, for God's sake, no. I'm always go on a diet between midnight and eight the following morning. <laughs> I was thinking about when he's older. There's always the grammar school if he gets in. And if he doesn't? Oh, he will. How much does uh, Daniel make a year? Not much. A thousand? Not as much as a thousand? I shall start work myself as soon as Carol goes to school. What do you do? Something. Joyce, listen. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm so loaded with cash. I've got uh, two men digging holes and another two looking for new places. You know the story? Branches everywhere, accountants, advisors, lawyers. Well, I'm not a person, I'm a gold mine. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. Oh, come on, Joyce. You know better than that. I want you to have some of the money. I want Peter to have some. No. <laughs> well, I knew you'd say that. He was my kid. He's not anymore. Dan wouldn't think of it. Well, Dan doesn't have to know. What do you want to do to us? Do I have to find a selfish reason to want to help my own kid? He's not yours. Legally... Oh, sod legally. Of course he's mine. Uh, let's at least try to be honest. I think you should go. Dan will be back in a minute. Well, I'll go in a minute. You know, the trouble with people like you is, you take money so bloody serious. I mean, you live a life like this, you're the living proof that there are more important things than money, better things than money can ever buy. 
You think we've all got the wrong values and you're damn all right. And then you treat money like it's more significant than the Holy Ghost and twice as dangerous. Yeah, why all the fuss? What's a thousand a year to me? I spill more than that. Congratulations. No, damn it, Joyce, you quit that. You're a pig-headed coward. I'll set up a trust fund for your kids. The whole lot of them. I don't intend to start discriminating between Dan's jeans and mine, for Christ's sake. And you'd never, you'd never see me or hear from me again. I don't want to buy an interest in your family. I've got one of my own. With a discretionary trust, the money won't even be mine. It'll be the Chancellor's. And he's not likely to buzz down here and see how Peter's doing in the nets, is he? Or ask for a kiss at an awkward moment? I want to help, that's all. Is that why you came down here? Not entirely. I didn't know how I was going to feel, did I? And as we've made a favourable impression, you decided to make us a grant, is that it? What am I supposed to do with my money, for God's sake? Waste it? You can't have him. You can't have him. I said you hadn't changed. I meant your looks. Ah, oh, Christ, you haven't, have you? In any way. You're still hugging that kid to yourself. Are all women the same? <laughs> and they talk about us having children, but when it comes to... You know, Barbara never talks about our bedroom. She always says, my bedroom, meaning hers. He was my kid. That's something you can't change. Ever going to tell him? I hadn't thought about it. Well, think about it. No, I don't think so. Do you think that's wise? <laughs> wise? I don't know. Or honest? Do you think it's honest? I should have thought the one thing we'd had enough of from our parents' generation, and that's the domestic liar. I don't like being called a liar. Well, no one does, do they? What happened, happened. Remember? Ah, all quiet on the Western Front? Seems to be. I'm safe to venture out. If you drive carefully. Hmm. No ravening hordes of teenage dolly birds lurking in the shrubbery? Shouldn't be. Oh, well, I'll go anyway. Why don't you pop over for some coffee in the morning? I might just do that. And I can show you around the penal colony. Often have a kick around the boys Sunday mornings, if you felt like it. Well, it wouldn't do me any harm. Oh, Dan, don't. Don't what? Start being shrewd and sensitive at this hour of the night. Did he upset you? Alan? When? How? No. Did he you? He talks a bit. He certainly does that. I don't think this house has ever been quite so flooded with words. No, one feels that his victims probably have to be rescued by helicopter. What do you think of Barbara? certainly knows how to. Look after herself. If you like. And do you? You don't have any reason to be jealous. You know what he wants, don't you? What does he want? I'm not sure. I must say he does that program very well. I think it's difficult. It's always difficult to make things look that easy. Do you not want them to come over tomorrow? There's something you ought to know. Has he been making passes? No. Then what's the problem? He wants Peter. Ah. That's making passes. And is it? Do you ever think he's not really yours? Never. Never. 
No wonder you're so difficult to live with. Me? Difficult? Perfection always is. I'm not perfect. Perfect. Christ. Why did you marry me? What's he been saying to you? Dan. Why do people marry people? You said you loved me. Because I loved you. Too quick. Too easy. Do everything you're usually not. Are you happy? What's happy? Dan. I don't necessarily believe in being happy. Happy is what people like Barbara and Alan are until he has just some woman in New York. Or she gets tired of him. Or it. Or whatever it is she gets tired of. Then all of a sudden they aren't happy any longer. I'm happy because I've got you. I've got the children. I've got what I want. You really don't regret it? I'm happy without having to be happy. And I don't come into it at all, do I? You're my wife. Dan, what do you think our future is? How do you see us? Well, damn, our future. It's now that interests me. What I do every day. This. Joyce, it's nearly half past one. Think how we'll feel in the morning. It's how I feel now that interests me. Are you trying to have a quarrel? If you want to have a quarrel, let's have a quarrel. Well, it would make a change, wouldn't it? I don't believe in quarrels. Dan, do you love me? Do you love me all the time? Oh, love, love, love. Thank you. For what? Sounding just a little bit impatient. I can't tell you what a relief it is. Joyce, what is this about? What's it about? It's about us. Us, us, us. Us. It's about us. And them? Are you still in love with him? I don't know that I was ever in love with him. You know, I actually believed he was suffering physical agony because I wouldn't go to bed with him. He told me I was ruining his health. I believed him. He even cried. And that's why you did? He frightened me. You say that as if it meant yes. You frighten me too if it comes to that. I do? I never cried. Never. Oh, well. That's what's frightening. I'm sorry. Doesn't it ever occur to you that you're being too kind? Kind? I don't mean to be kind. You were being kind when you married me, weren't you? Kind? Oh, it's not a crime. It's not a crime. That's good. Protecting me, weren't you? I wanted you. And yourself. You were also protecting yourself. Was I? From what? Women like her. Was I? Like Barbara, women who wanted things. So you decided to be kind to me. Poor, lost, impregnated by shit Joyce Hadley. Which rhymed with Bradley, which was as good a reason for marrying me as any other. Oh, don't think I wasn't grateful. I was. I am. Joyce, I'm tired. I'm tired and I've got kids to cope with in the morning. You didn't want a wife at all, did you? This is what I didn't want, Joyce. This. Precisely this. Satisfied? I might be if we went on all night. Haven't we? I thought we had. You forgave me, didn't you? Oh, Joyce, Joyce, Joyce. You forgave me. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, try, try. You didn't love me despite my being pregnant. You didn't love me despite my having made a mess of my silly life. You loved me because I had. Because I was pregnant by someone else. Because I was fat and foolish. Because of all those things. Because you could play God with me and lift me up. Just like you play God with those boys. Those horrible, ugly, beastly boys. We're all of them going to end up in the clink and you know it. Oh, you bring them to the house and you talk to them and you understand them. And you hold out that helping hand of yours. The great and gentle Dan who really cares. And who isn't part of the big, ugly system. Who really understands individual human beings. No matter how hopeless and delinquent they may be. After all... He married a woman no one else wanted, didn't he? A woman despised and rejected of the people. Big with another man's child. Oh, the man is a saint, a saint, nothing short of a saint. He's a thunder one girl and he goeth.
I must say you're turning it on this morning, lad. Hey! You ever thought of becoming a professional? No. Uh, told you there was no level in ball control, eh, Graham? Yeah. Oh, only it, uh, it so happens that a, a London club, which I'm not at liberty to disclose, has asked me to become a director. I was London. thinking. Yeah. It's not an easy life. Yeah, I don't suppose they want me anyway. That's not the attitude, Graham. <laughs> you would have to convince them. Yeah, well, I've got to... I have a word with Billy Thomas. It was by way of being a mate of mine. Yeah. You'd appreciate that, wouldn't you, Graham? Yeah, it should be. Great. So I won't much. forget. I never forget people who make a fool of me. All right, thanks, Tom. Right. <laughs> ah, it's very interesting. Might make a program someday. I'd be grateful if you wouldn't push things too fast with Graham and the football. He's coming up to O levels, and I'd hate to see him, you know, sidetracked. Oh, of course not. On the other hand, uh, Billy could be interested in the kid. And it's then... risky, though, isn't it? A lot of them don't make the grade. Oh, everything's risky. Life's risky. On the other hand, with four or five O-levels... <laughs> oh, damn, be honest, with four or five O-levels, what? Maybe I'll be able to hold down a decent job. Oh, I'd give all my O-levels for a hat-trick against Newport County Reserve. I spent a lot of time working with this lad. Giving him confidence in himself. Persuading him there's more to life than... What, the roar of the crowd, eh? Yes, if you like. And is there? Yes. Sure. Right, sure. How do you know this job of his will be so decent, as you call it? I mean, how do you know he wants to be what you think he ought to be? I just know that you're in the bright lights now. Oh, Jesus Christ, Daniel. I want him to be a footballer, not a chorus girl. He's mine, that boy. I've done the work day by day, week by week with that lad. I'm trying to keep him from... From... From what? Mucky books and dirty talk? Village girls with pliable knees? You're very quick with your tongue, aren't you? May surprise you, but um, I'd like to do a bit of good in the world too, you know? Help a kid who needs help. All these boys need help. Dan, I admire what you're doing. It's just... Uh, it's I'm... always easy to help the ones who need it least. Well, like you did as Graham. Just leave him to me, Alan. That's all I'm asking. Is it? I want him to have something to rely on first. After that... Well, you want him to rely on you. Why did you have to come down here? I didn't have to. I just did. Why? I'll tell you. Because I'm a stirrer. I like making trouble. Is that what you wanted to hear? Is that a joke? Yes. Why don't you try doing the hard thing for once? So, Jess? Finding out how things really are. What the real consequences are of a place like this. Instead of... Now, forgive me for trying to help. Forgive me for trespassing in the sacred grove. I didn't realize the kid meant so much to you. No. Hello, Jenny. <clears throat> All right. Hello, Ken. I told this character we'd be there before lunch, you know, so we could show us around the cottage. Because you'd be thoroughly welcome. Bless you, but we really do want to see this cottage. Well, I do hope it works out. <laughs> Sam's a honey. Uh, you mean not have seen the last of us? Well, I sincerely hope not. And I sincerely hope the same. Sincerely. <laughs> Goodbye, Peter Osport. Goodbye. 
It's very nice to have met you. Very. Well, I do hope we shall be friends now. I can't see why we shouldn't, can you? Well, I'm serious about a bed. Any time you're in London, just give us ten minutes' notice to tip the last people out. Careful, because we might just do that. Any time you're passing. I never make promises I don't keep. Unless I want to. Anyway, you'll be hearing from us one way or another. Promise. For heaven's sake, the pair of you. What's the matter? One doll, two mothers. Can't they take it in turns? Possessions. What are you doing? The ironing. With this? I'm doing the ironing with one hand and saving enough box tops for a castle in Spain with the other. Good luck. Thank you, I shall need it. I'm so happy with my satin finish because... Have you done that bit yet? Don't mock me, Dan. Do you mind? Mock you? I'm not mocking you. I'm mocking this stupid competition of yours. Well, what other hope do I have? Hope? Same hope I've got, I suppose. Same hope I've got of getting all these wretched essays corrected before... before the doorbell rings. Who the hell's that? I don't know. Probably Peter. Can't we bother to come? I'm sure it'll that? be something to do with you. Uh, name of Bradley. The same. Uh, I'm here. So I see. Television. Television? No cottage? I never ordered a television. Did you order a television? <laughs> no, of course not. Perhaps you've won one. I don't think so. Who said... I don't want a television. Well, it's all written down here. I don't care what's written down. I don't want it. Of course we want it. Why, you've got one already, have you? It's a present. In the kingdom of the blind. Love, Alan. Some sweets never seem to change. You like them, but you get tired of them. Lucky numbers are different. In the kingdom of the lucky blind. Numbers are the sweets you don't get a chance to get the tired of. The one-eyed monster Look, is In the last king. year, these new numbers. 10, 27, 35. And now, 37, cherry candy. 30, pineapple and cream. 40, lemon tang. 41, chocolate caramel. All new and more to come. So pick Lucky Numbers, the sweets you don't get a chance to get tired of. Lucky Numbers. The news that the monster was in the district made everybody very, very excited. Very excited. The police drove up and down the streets and they asked everybody if they had seen the monster. The monster was, was very fierce, they said. And anyone who saw the monster was to tell them right away. They showed pictures of the monster to of the monster to all the people and they also showed them what its tracks looked like in case they found tracks in the garden or anywhere else like that. The boys and girls from the school helped help the police and the army and the fire brigade to hunt, the mon hunt everywhere for the monster. The monster was lying low. Lying low? Lying low. They looked, they looked on the common and they sent frogmen down into the lake. It was fun to hunt the monster and everybody volunteered to join in. The ladies made pots of tea and buttered buns. Then one day the monster was found in one of the houses. The house was surrounded with tanks and policemen with dogs. A, a policeman with a loudspeaker shouted to the monster to come out or they would go in and get him out. The, he did not come out so they went, so they stormed the house with, t with, they stormed the house and broke down the door and they filled the house with tear gas. And then they dragged the monster out of the armchair where he was sitting. And they put a blanket over him so that he shouldn't frighten the people. And then they, and then they took him off to a prison and locked him in. And then they threw away the key. And that's all I had time for, sir. You never described the monster? No, sir. I just thought of him like an ordinary man, sir, looking from the outside. Yes, that's rather how I saw him. Yes, sir.
police protection. Come on, boys. Ah, you came. You see? I just finished listening to this. Oh, sorry. Do sit down. Shop in. Oh, Narcissus never had the fun we have. My dear, if he'd had the sound of his own voice as well as his pool, we should never have heard the last of him. <laughs> nice place you got. Nice places. Yeah, half this club is due to go down to the cottage as soon as the painters are finished, if they ever do. I think they must put the stuff on with their tongues. <laughs> well, even when you said you were coming, I never thought you'd come. How are you? How is everyone? Everyone's fine. You're positively God in our house. Well, I have to be God in everybody's house, otherwise I'm slippy. The box, I assume? What else? Was Dan displeased? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. If his hair shirt didn't scratch, he'd change his tailor. <laughs> Barbara's down at the cottage with the white woman's burden. She'll be sorry she missed you. She loves it down there. You look marvellous. Marvellous? How do you do it? I save the coupons. Good, I like it, I like it. Well, here we are, you and me. Who'd have thunk it, eh? What'd you tell the folks in the village? That I was having a day in London. Oh, going back tonight. Less the fog thickens. Ah. Getting thicker by the minute. Cheap day return. <laughs> How the other half lives, you see. Oh, I understand you the difference any day. Alan, I'm a bit desperate, though I may not look it. <laughs> That's why I wrote to you. This is what desperation looks like. We must have more of it. You don't have to be desperate before you write to me. I swear. Why do you think I put this whole incredible operation together? What? The tooth ensemble. To put your eye out. Sorry. So that I can make you see what you'd missed. Conspicuous presumption, that's me. I even wanted to make my name out so you'd be sorry for walking away. That's silly. <laughs> well, the whole thing's silly. It even applies to Barbara. Alan. Uh, Prettiest girl in the Wrens, that's Barbara, the one they all wanted, best references. Oh. You thought I wasn't good enough. That wasn't it at all. You know, every time I go to bed with a girl, I think of you somewhere along the line. You're... Only saying that, am I? You know the nicest thing about success? It makes you so damned attractive. Well, look at me, I'm attractive. I always thought you were. Did you, Joycey? Anyway, here you are at last, and uh, don't think I'm not chuffed, because I'm chuffed. Well, look at me. Chuffed. You don't have to be desperate any longer. I swear. Alan, there's something I want. Something I don't like to ask. Ask? I want a job. A job? Yes. A job? Oh, choice. Choice. Mm -hmm. I love you, I love you. I love you. Suddenly it's love. You're corrupt. You're beautiful. I love you. Mm -hmm. You're corrupt. You're beautiful. Nothing easier. Nothing in the world. She's corrupt. Joyce Hadley is corrupt. I love her. I love her. Well? I never felt better in my life.
He wants me to keep him posted. What's that mean exactly? You're young. How is that? Fine, terrific. What does he say about me now? You shouldn't have done the keeper. That was silly. I was tripped. You know it was. That was only one thing. I didn't play bad though, did I? You played well. A bit selfish, as usual. You have to, don't you? Oh well, this is the life then, eh? As seen on television. Right. You know, I was talking to one of the blokes after. Fifteen years, like me. You know what he's making? Making? Sixteen quid a week. Doing what? Building site. Sixteen quid. Fifteen? Why isn't he at school? Did the cable, didn't he? It's not so bad, is it? School? Very foreign policy. Not exactly a life, is it? I reckon I could make a go of it here in London. Yeah, I reckon I could. Trouble is, you need a few bob to get you started. In life, I mean. Which I happen not to have. A grant, really, that's what I need. Off the government or someone. Woman, and do you find that there's a conflict between your real life and uh, your role as wife and mother and uh, your life as a novelist? Well, I mean, I mean, for instance, um, don't you find that sometimes find that there's a conflict between, um, for instance, an incident that might have taken place in real life that perhaps was possibly very painful, and you find yourself thinking, well, yes, that would make rather a good incident in a story. I mean, that must happen to you sometimes, doesn't it? It does, mm. yes. Tell me how, uh, how you come to write for men so convincingly. Um, I'm thinking, for instance, of someone like uh, Victor in uh, A Language Game, who seemed to me uh, tremendously sexy and alive. And, and... <laughs>